Cruz. My name is Xavier Blaine Cruz. Um, first and foremost, I'm an artist. Um, I've been drawing ever since I was a little kid. Dragon Ball Z, comic books especially, that was had a huge influence on me, and um, definitely graffiti. So, artist at heart, through and throughout. To be honest, I always wanted to be an NBA basketball player, you know, professional basketball player. And it's real funny because as much as I was chasing basketball and my dreams of basketball, art was always there. It was just always there, whether I knew it or not. I ended up, you know, trying out for a Division II school in Georgia, and when I told them my major was um, art, they actually sent me to another art school. And I didn't really think too much of it because when I went, when I first went to school, it was at St. John's, and I had, you know, big pipe dreams of walking onto the team over there. So, art was never number one. It was always a passion, but I always looked at it like more of like a passion that I love to do that you know takes me away from the world and, and, and almost in a hobby sort of sense. without you know a big contract meaning I wasn't making any kind of substantial amounts of money to where I could you know just play basketball all day every day um, so the mental issue was the whole you know society you know I'm getting a little older I need to grow up you could say and um, stop chasing this dream or whatever and then the physical issue was that or the, the physical block was a little bit after I came back, I was I was playing again because I can't stop playing basketball. I still play basketball to this day. <laughs> um, so when I when I came back, I tore my meniscus, and um, the problem was I just came back from from overseas and I didn't have any health insurance. So a meniscus is not a serious you know career threatening injury, but it's just one of those things where. You can't play basketball with a torn meniscus right afterwards. So I really had to literally just stop playing basketball for a good three to four months before I could even run and, and, and play on it again, even though it was, it was torn. So that was like the major thing. And I guess what I learned through basketball and through being an artist is, you know, to just keep going. That's just, that's just one setback, you know? Um, my meniscus was just like if I don't have the, the right paint colors. You could always mix paint colors or change your palette, you know? Crazy. So the way my brand started was I, I told you I was in certain types of industries where you had to, you know, look a certain type of way. You had to be clean shaven, for example. Um, I worked at a restaurant down by Union Square and you had to shave and you had to have a tie, you know, white shirt pressed it had to be it had to you know you had to look very nice and I just it's there's nothing wrong with that with that style or that look but I just don't think that it represented me because I don't say I'm unorganized but I just say that I just you know I'm a little bit more organic with it you know I, I like I like to let things flow sometimes you know I like to let my beard grow out for, for the most time um, or let my hair get long and stuff like that so the fashion line actually came to me in 2012, especially being back in New York, working at the restaurant in Union Square, you know, seeing all these, these different people expressing themselves through fashion. I mean, I would, I would look at people just based off of what they wear and I'd want to know about them, you know? So uh, that's when I started to go into it and say, oh man, you know, like I want to represent myself in only the way I could represent myself in only the way I can, you know, because I could wear other brands, but it's it's an extension of whoever those brands belong to. But when I wear my clothes, it's actually representing me, you know. Um, a lot of people they'll they'll buy brands and stuff like that just to to fit in with a certain group of people or to be looked at a certain way, um, whether that's positive or any other way that it is. And for me, 
I just really wanted people to look at me for me. That first impression, people want to know, where are you from? What, what background are you? Oh, I thought you were this, I thought you were that. And it's very rare that somebody will look at me and say, oh, you're this, this, and this, and this, and this. And they're right on all, on all degrees, you know what I mean? Um, and I'm not saying that my fashion line brings that out. It's not like you can look at my hoodie and, and say, oh, you're this and you're that, and you'll be right on everything. But at least you can look at my hoodie and know that that's me. Actually, my brand is worldwide. Um, you know, I actually was doing all the designs and everything in Germany and actually showed a couple of people my designs, my clothes and everything like that in Germany. And a couple of people have ordered it in Germany and one order actually went to the Netherlands. So um, it took a month for it to get there. <laughs> but that's the type of shipping that that person chose to, to, to get with it. Um, of course, it's logistics. You know, that's, that's a big thing with business. Um, to get it to really go worldwide, the logistics have to be, you know, right on point. Uh, when you look at your numbers and when you crunch numbers and you know you gotta you gotta do your books and stuff like that but I definitely want my, my brand to go worldwide without a doubt <laughs> that's a crazy transition man uh, moving from here to Germany was like a really really crazy transition and I have a lot more respect for people that do it on their own and you know I was fortunate to have to have my my woman there to help me and to kind of be my my mediator and, and, and my muse, you know what I mean? Um, but the transition is, is pretty crazy, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, the food's different, the language is different. The one good thing I will say though is 50% of the time, if not 60% of the time, most people speak English. It's not rude, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. They're not being rude, it's just different, you know? Uh, I asked my girlfriend, uh, how do you say, how are you? in German, and which is um, Wie geht es dir? And so I said, okay, cool. So I kept that in my, in my memory bank and uh, you know, I would say, hello, wie geht es dir? And the people would just look at me like, um, they would be like, good, gut, und dir? Like they would, they would feel like they had to sit there and talk to me for a while. But that's not the case. It's just when somebody says, how are you doing? It's actually like a more of a personal question. Unlike here in America, it's like, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? And then you walk away. You don't even you don't even realize that you're asking them a question like what's up? And then you realize I'm just going to answer it with what's up and then you walk away, you know? So that's that's just one of the the little differences. It's just it's just different culture. It's not rude and just keep your mind open to like how they do things and stuff like that. But it's really not it's really not, you know, a 180 degree difference from America. You know, there's a lot of similarities. Oh man, 20 years from now, that's, that's a loaded question. Number one, I want to be alive. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's definitely number one. 20 years from now, I definitely want to be al alive because you never know what could happen. Um, and you know, honestly, I see myself 20 years from now still with this brand, working on it, expanding it, you know what I mean? And, and also delving into other things, you know, in terms of um, my art, you know, I mean, I love my art.
also the other people that I've met that have helped me in my situation. You know, like I wouldn't be anywhere without my family, without my friends. I always say that, you know, because it's true. a reflection of myself.